The observable universe contains one sextillion stars. That's a billion trillion of them. As we expand out and colonize space, we will encounter countless different types of stars. However, as the universe ages, some stars will die out more quickly than others. What will the last types of stars be in the universe? And what would they make the universe look like? For the purposes of this video, we are only going to be looking at a time the star remains in the main sequence, which is the time that a star can undergo fusion of hydrogen into helium at their cores. This nuclear fusion in the core of a star maintains a hydrostatic equilibrium, which is where the inward pressure of gravity is counteracted by the outward pressure of heat produced by radiation and gas pressure. What determines the lifetime of a star is dependent on its mass. The heavier a star is, the shorter the time it will spend in the main sequence. The reason for this is because heavier stars will have significantly more inwards gravitational pressure exerted on them, which increases the temperature of the core, which causes fusion of hydrogen and helium to speed up. So if the nuclear fuel in the core is used up faster, then the star will lose its hydrostatic equilibrium faster as well. So this means that stars with the shortest lifespans would be those with the highest mass. This gives us a starting point, beginning with a theoretical kind of star with such a high mass that it would not exist in the modern universe. Quasi-stars have one main difference from the rest of the stars in this list. Their energy comes from an inner black hole, which slowly eats away at the star. Such a star would only last for around 7 million years before the inner black hole completely devoured it. If quasi-stars ever existed, the reason why none exist today is due to heavier elements contaminating the interstellar medium. Since a quasi-star was composed entirely of hydrogen and helium, these heavier elements would have interfered with its formation. Stars in the present day universe are classified using the morgan keenan system, a system where stars are given a letter ranging from O to M, with O being the hottest and M being the coolest. The stars of the shortest lifespan that exist in the present day universe would be the blue O-type stars. The reason for this is because they are the most massive stars existing today. And as we found out, the more massive a star is, the hotter it is. These stars can weigh up to 15 to 90 times the mass of the sun and have a very short lifespan of just 5 to 6 million years. They are also a very rare class of star, with only 1 in 300 million stars belonging to this classification. B-class stars are also blue stars, but are less massive than an O-class star, weighing anywhere from 3 to 17 times the mass of our sun. Because of this, these stars can live anywhere from 15 to 500 million years, depending on their mass. B-class stars are still relatively rare, with only one in every 800 stars belonging to this group. Rigel, the seventh brightest star in the night sky, is a B-class star. However, as we continue down this list, the lifespan of stars begins to increase at a dramatic rate. A-class stars weigh anywhere from 1.6 to 2.4 times the mass of our sun and have a lifetime of up to 1 billion years. There are some well-known A-class stars, such as Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, and Vega, which spins so rapidly it has turned into a distorted egg shape. F-class stars are slightly more massive than our sun and make up 3% of all stars. With masses ranging anywhere from 1.01 .01 to 1.4 times the mass of our sun, they can live for up to 5 billion years. Already, we can see that F-class stars are able to outlive all the other stars on this list. But even with a 5 billion year lifespan, this is still very short for some of the next classes. G-class stars include our sun. They range in colour from yellow to white. Interestingly enough, our sun is not actually yellow, but it's white. The sun appears yellow to us on Earth because of our atmosphere, which scatters and changes the appearance of the colour to yellow on the ground. These G-class stars can live double as long as F-class stars, at 10 billion years. Below G-class stars are two more varieties. K-class stars are the second lightest type of star. They weigh in between half the mass of our sun and 80% of its mass. As the rule goes, the less massive, the less hot the core is, and the less fast fusion occurs. So these stars being less massive will live longer because their fuel is not burnt as fast. K-class stars can live anywhere from 25 billion to 100 billion years. One of the closest stars to us, Alpha Centauri b, is a K-class star. M-class stars are cool red stars and include red dwarfs. Red dwarfs are tiny stars with masses ranging from 60% to just 7% the mass of our sun. At such a small mass, a red dwarf could live for up to 10 trillion years. The closest known star, other than our sun, is a red dwarf star called Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf just 4.2 light years away. Red dwarfs will far outlive any other class of star, and if humanity survives long enough, we might find a home in the distant future around this kind of star. However, 
Is this the longest lived class of star? In the present day universe, this is certainly the case. But as more stars die and scatter their stardust throughout the cosmos, a star with enough metal inside of it may give rise to a new class of star not possible in the modern day universe. And this kind of star could live for much longer. Frozen stars are a class of star that have a fusion burning main sequence like any other star, but weigh only 4% the mass of the sun. Normally, this would not be massive enough to allow fusion to occur. But in the distant future, the cosmic medium will allow stars with much more metal inside of them to form. This higher metal concentration would help retain heat in the core and build up high enough temperatures to allow fusion to occur. Because of this, these kinds of stars at half the mass of red dwarfs could far outlive even them with lifespans significantly longer than 10 trillion years. So potentially, humanity's last home could be around a tiny frozen star. If you want to learn more about frozen stars and quasi-stars, I've made videos on both before, so I'll link them both in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching.